clicks, if that helps. Okay, ready, set, go. Welcome to World of Monsters, I'm Monster Master Arthur, and today I'm going to try to present the animal kingdom to you as clearly as possible. Life classification as we know it on this planet. Why? Because lately when I was researching the next monster that I'm going to be discussing, I often look for diagrams and things re uh, referring to the animal kingdom and classification system, and they're simply not good uh, visual uh, presentations of this out there. There's no good images, really not great, and there's definitely not no good videos that I uh, stumbled upon. So I wanted to make this video. And if you are here for the first time and you're watching this and you were wondering why you just heard the word monster twice, well, this is Monster Channel. Um, so I talk about monsters, analyze them, see how they could be scientifically classified. And so in doing that research, that's why I come down to here. So this should be interesting for anybody studying biology or interested in animal or life on this planet. And I will only be talking about uh, animals in this video. So bear with me. I will try to go as fast as possible through this presentation. But keep in mind, there's a lot of stuff to cover. So starting with life. Life as we know it. And life, well, in the 1970s, somebody um, started it by dividing it into three categories. And it were these three and the most... Uh, Kind of, kind of commonly known to us will be this one because it includes animals, funguses, plants, and such. But this was later changed. So now we divide life uh, as our teachings or as uh, the latest scientific ways, and these things change, uh, into two categories, uh, I mean into two sections of the empire category. So that is the first category under life. And that is also known as domains. So don't be confused if you see this category for referred to as domains. They're both. Um, I think Empire might be a newer uh, reference to this section, but uh, again, they're the same. In the, in the same in this video, we will be referring to this section as domain uh, as <laughs> empires. So there are two empires, and these empires are the Pro prokaryotic and eukaryotic. And so the, uh, the prokaryotic, the differences between these two kind of life forms, the cells, are these are very simple cells on the left side, the prokaryotic, they include bacteria, uh, for example, they have no nucleus, they're very small, no membrane bound organelles. Now, in the eukaryotic section, we have all the more advanced organisms that these cells have an a nucleus, they're larger, they have membrane-bound organelles, and for example, there we have plants here and animal cells. So we're probably going to go and focus into this area. Now the next uh, category we will be looking at now that it's branching out into, this is the whole tree of life, except it's more like the root of life considering we're going downward, or it's an upside-down tree. Um, so the kingdoms divide into now, uh, the prokaryotic will have the bacteria kingdom, and that's it for the prokaryotic section. And these guys look like this. We have all sorts of bacteria. Uh, the, the shapes range very much, and they still remain quite fascinating. So, sure can get some surely can get some inspiration there for some monstrous conception. And the next we have, we go into eukaryotic, and here we have five. It branches out into five kingdoms, and these are the protozoa. And the protozoa are a little more advanced, you can see here. They look like little uh, alien spaceships or alien life forms. The forms themselves, not just the shapes, start to take on very unique characteristics and and looks so very interesting and inspiring and then we have the chromista kingdom and the chromista kingdom appears as so we also have a good variety to them but now we start to see more complex things i think this is a more 
uh, I think this is known as the brown algae. I'm not sure, but we see that it's they're starting to get larger in size, more, as mentioned, complex. The next uh, kingdom is the Plantea. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right either, Plantea. But uh, in the end, I will mispronounce a lot here. And keep in mind, it's not all about that. It's about getting as much of this presented to you guys in as simple of a way as possible. So the Plantea is, as it sounds, the plant kingdom plants. So we have, uh, they divide into seed producing plants, non seed producing plants. We have non vascular and vascular plants. We have simple plants such as mosses. Then we have ferns and we go up to even trees and herbs. Then on the right side, the vascular plants, we have some seed producing plants. The spore producing plants connect with the vascular and so on. We have plants, uh, flowering plants and fruits, vegetables and things like that. Now, it's interesting to keep in mind because a lot of monsters do rela relate to different uh, plant types as well. So if you're researching a monster uh, that is plant-like, this would be the route you'd want to go to. Uh, we're not going to be getting into that route here and neither the next one, but the next one is the fungi, the fungus kingdom. And these are the mushrooms and such. And this one's an important one to note, as some people don't realize that mushrooms belong to a category, a, ki a whole kingdom of their own. They're not actually plants. And some people misunderstand that. So we have simple mushrooms such as these kind of flat caps, or we have these two, these more advanced ones. Um, so there's a nice big variety to mushrooms as well. Pretty cool category. Again, the one that we're going to focus the most on in this video, since we have limited space here and time, is the animal kingdom. And if you want me to branch out more into any of this stuff later in future videos, do let me know. I'd be happy to do so. And the animal kingdom, of course, represents all these guys and much, much more. And it's important for a lot of people to see this, to understand that not just elephants and large creatures like lions and tigers and crocodiles are animals, but the small ones, not even just the frogs, but spiders, mosquitoes, worms, all belong to the animal kingdom. So if somebody tells you a fly or an ant is not an animal, well, yes, it is. So is an octopus, so is a shrimp. So the animal kingdom has a huge and beautiful variety to it. So we have six kingdoms here. This was the 1998 representation, representation, but in 2015, things changed. And now instead of six, we have seven kingdoms. And these seven kingdoms, well, they expanded under the prokaryotic section where they indeed accepted Archaea into a kingdom of its own. As we saw at the beginning of this video where I mentioned in 1977 there was just three kingdoms. Well, now there's seven, but Archaea is in a kingdom of its own. Just to avoid some, dissuade some future confusion. Now continuing, let's uh, spice this up a little bit, make it look a little nicer for presentation. And now we go into the next category down the branches or the root system of this tree of life, and we have the phylum, or the phyla. And the phylum, phylum is basically the same as division. So you're going to see some things referring to division, some areas to phylum. Divisions are more used, the word division is more used when classifying plants, and phyla or, and phylum is more used in classifying creatures and animals. So here we're going to stick with Phylum. And bacteria has 29 of them. Archaea has 5 phyla. Protozoa has 11 phyla. Now keep in mind, these aren't species. Because species are a lot more, right? There's thousands of species. This is just group. There's groups of 11, and these groups break down to other groups, and those to more. So let's continue. Chromista has 9 phyla. Plantea has 12 phyla, fungi has 7, and animals have 35 phylum, the most of all the, of these categories. 
Uh, so now we're going to branch off into animal, the animal kingdom. Uh, and we're going to do so. We're going to focus now on animals. So we're not going to be focusing on plants, fungi, and all that other stuff. That all can be branched out similarly as we're going to branch out this animal kingdom. So for presentation and understanding purposes, we're going to focus on animals. And we're starting with the phyla, the phylum of anthropoda, anthropods. Or arthropods, sorry, not anthropods. Arthropods. And arthropods are basically these creatures. They have an exoskeleton. Uh, they're invertebrates. Uh, you have examples of crab, some extinct species here as well. Centipede, butterfly. Creatures like that. Uh, so the creepy crawlies, as people like to call them. A lot of them. Uh, then we have chordata. And Cordata, you will realize a lot more is uh, uh, recognizable if you're not familiar with uh, animals too much. So you start to see this huge variety here from these kind of creatures here, more simplified uh, forms of life to these more advanced ones, such as mammals and reptiles and birds. So we got a, quite a nice variety in this section. Continuing, we have the third one. That we're going to be talking about and that's mollusca that's mollusks the mollusk phylum not the mollusk kingdom the mollusk phylum right and he's so here i'm just going to present three out of the 35 as i can't fit them in and it's just to avoid confu confusion right so let's look at mollusks what the mollusks mollusks look like well we have octopi there we have uh, snails we have squids, all these kind of uh, life forms. So that's in the mollusk section here. All right, I'm not continuing. We are now making our way to the next category type, and that's subphyla. So now the phyla that we know can get split up in the subphyla too, like a secondary branch even, because not all next species have to go under it. I hope how this will get more explain, uh, better explained as I keep going. And to avoid confusion, there's so many types of subgroups that we're not going to mention too many of them. I'm just going to mention some of the sub subgroups, subform of the original subgroups. There's also sub superphyla. There's sub kingdoms and there's clades. So I'm going to try to stick with the. Uh, most uh, clear ones as possible, although they're all relevant. Um, so, yeah, just to avoid confusion. So just anytime that's a sub or something like this, just consider it as another group that breaks it down. It's not as big a group as we list on the left-hand corner here, but they're just subgroups, smaller and smaller groupings. So let's forget about these three terms for now and keep going. All right, so we're going to explore the arthropods first real quick, and they branch out into one, two, three, four, five. Five subphyla, and the first of which is the trilobites. And trilobites, as you can see here, are all extinct. It's an extinct branch of arthropods that look as such, these sort of uh, sea creatures and the... And, uh, Mostly kind of water creatures. All right, then we have the chelicerites, 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 and you may have never heard the word, but you have seen them. And these contain arachnids and, well, creatures like so, as well as horseshoe crabs, so uh, spiders, scorpions. Okay, let's close that up. Let's look at the next subphyla which is myriapods and myriapods appear as so there are the they are the the roly-polies or pill bugs which is down here similar to a, a regular roly-poly it's a different species obviously then we have the mill millipedes and different centipedes going to this grouping of myriapods then we have crustaceans and crustaceans, well, you've probably eaten a crustacean before, and this probably sounds familiar to you, because crustaceans represent the various crabs, 
lobsters and shrimp out there. So here are some examples from that. Continuing the final one, subphyla for arthropods is hexapods. And hexapods are very familiar to you, I'm sure, because they represent a lot of the insects out there. Well, all the insects out there and more. So let's explore further. That's going to be our little subphyla section for arthropods. Now, the next category, the major category of grouping, will be the class system, the classes. And there are three classes in chelicerites, chelicerites. And why did I not list that any under trilobites? Because some types of creatures are not classified always in an order. Sometimes they skip into a grouping of uh, order or sometimes straight to a grouping of species, so they skip that step. And in this case, uh, trilobites are not categorized into classes. Next, I believe. So, we're going to be looking at the, and the various other ones as well, such as the crustaceans have, uh, I believe, orders under them, and the trilobites have, uh, I forgot what subclass under it but they're all subgroups with a different title than class. Some of them are pretty much very similar, so don't get too confused and caught up with this. Let's talk about the three classes of chelicerates. Chelicerates. One of them, one of the three, the most commonly known one, is going to be arachnida. And you might already understand which that one is, as it sounds very similar to arachnids, as these are arachnids. And arachnids, as you know, are spiders. But they're not just spiders, they're also scorpions, they're wind scorpions, uh, such as the, the vinegaroon, um, whip scorpions, the sun spider, or uh, desert camel, oh, what is it called, the camel spider, something like that. They get really large, we have regular spiders, and we have ticks even in this category, and these really tiny false scorpions, which I've actually found one before, and you guys would never know if it's around because they're so incredibly tiny. Yet, they hold that intelligence of a scorpion. It's a fascinating creature. Continuing, we have the myriapods, which have uh, four classes under them. Crustaceans, which have seven, so I take back what I said earlier. Uh, they do, in fact, have classes under them, and so do hexapods. So I believe that's the trilobites. I think that uh, break down to order next, or something like that, which is the next uh, level of classification. So they sk skip the class uh, system. Okay, let's take a look at the hexapods now. And the so the one I always I usually point out is the one that most people will recognize. And in this case, it's these guys, the insecta, the insecta class, which is are well insects. So you got all these uh, three uh, three segmented types of bodies. Uh, they have three segmented types of bodies and two sets of three or six legs total, right? So we've all heard that about insects. And remember, a spider has two body parts and four or eight legs. Insect has three and six legs. So very obvious uh, things just to kind of remember uh, seeing those apart, as there are many other differences as well. So now we go into the subclass. And, uh, right, so this is another subcategory or another, just, let's just call it a subgroup. And so crustaceans have 13 such subgroups. Total. Uh, total, I believe. I believe total. Arachnida Arachnids have uh, one subclass. Insecta have two subclasses. And that's that. That's what we're going to explore on this side of the spectrum. So we're pretty much done exploring here. Um, because I want to focus on a another section of creatures. So if you are exploring something that has an exoskeleton, it's, it doesn't have a back any bones, 
interior bones, you'd be going down further through these branches. But, and, and so now is a great time to ask that question, is whether that animal or monster, whatever you are researching, has a backbone, a vertebrae, bones. And that's what a vertebrae is, right? Is it a vertebrate or an invertebrate? And so the one that would be, uh, the, the phylum that would contain the organisms of invertebrates, including invertebrates, not only though, is chordata. Very important to remember, not all chordatas have are vertebrates, but all the verte uh, vertebrates that belong in the whole animal kingdom remain in this category of chordata. So, next we have uh, classes which mollusks have 10 classes. So I'll be exploring chordata after mollusk because we'll be branching that off further. So let's just explore the mollusk uh, phylum or phyla phylum, the, the mollusk, mollusk phylum a little bit more to get a better understanding of how this works. Then we'll go to chordata last. All right, so in the mollusk section, we have cephalopods. And cephalopods, which we've already mentioned when we showed the mollusk picture, are these guys, are the tentacled ones out there. So we have the octopus, we have the cuttlefish, uh, squid, and all of that. So these are just a few examples of mollusks, of, I mean, cephalopods. Now, mollusks also contain a class of, oops, a class of... What am I doing? Ah, okay, let's go down the cephalopods now. Now, notice that mollusks are 10 different classes, right? And that, I'm just going to display two of them to you guys, the ones that are most commonly known, again, because some of them get really weird that people have never seen or recognized. Now, the cephalopods, the squid and octopi, have a subclass of four more now, okay? Gastropods. Gastropods are the second one I'm going to present for mollusks, and we also saw them as these are the snails, the slugs, the sea slugs, like a very weird and interesting looking. So all these kind of organisms go into gastropods. Okay, so you will certainly you will remember maybe not the words, but these groupings of gastropod and cephalopods. Continuing, gastropods have four. There were four. There were four subclasses, but that changed, and now they're not recognized as so anymore. And that's an important thing to state, is that these things change, guys. Every few years, the scientific community updates these things. Things get changed, and so classification changes slightly, but not too drastically, not anymore. So gastropods... I, I don't even know if they have subclasses anymore. They might not even. All right, now let's go to Chordata. Chordata. And Chordata has at least three. Again, it's, it's hard to determine exactly, but that's not the point here anyway. The point is just to go down these branches and see how they actually wind out. Or this would take even longer, and I'm sure this is already taking enough of your time. So, we're going to talk about one of those three in the Chordata section. The most recognizable, maybe not the most, well, I think in the Chordata section, definitely the most. And that's the vertebrata, creatures with bones, with vertebrae. Ah, so that's where they come in. So there's two other categories that actually aren't vertebrates in Chordata, and one that does. So when somebody says vertebrates come in... Chordata means they have a vertebrate. Well, not necessarily. Okay, there's two more categories in there that don't. The vertebrata do, and there are nine classes of these creatures that have bones, that have a vertebrae. All right, let's explore. So we're going to talk about one of those uh, classes. And well, we're going to talk about a category within that category, and that category is four-legged beings, four-legged creatures. 
and those are called tetrapods. Tetrapods. So that's just kind of a, an, a, a like an overall term that foreshadows a lot of these uh, subgroupings. And tetrapod itself spreads out into four different categories. All right, first the amphibia. Ooh, now with things might be getting familiar, right? Amphibia, amphibian, which has two subclasses. And these are an example of amphibians. We've got frogs, toads, newts, uh, salamanders, and these little guys called Sicilians, which may be your first time seeing them. There is mud puppy. Alrighty. Next, we got reptilia. Of course, as you know, as reptiles. There's seven or there's more than seven subclasses. There's maybe seven literal subclasses or less, but then they're divided into more subcategories, sub-sub of that. So there's a lot, okay? And this is an example. We've got crocodilians, we've got snakes, turtles, tortoises, lizards, and this strange little guy, which we'll probably hear more about soon. So let's continue. And then we have aves. I don't know if that's how you say aves, aves, avian. Well, avian is different, but aves, I'm just going to call them aves. Uh, and there's four subclasses to them, and those are birds. All these feather, feathered creatures on two legs that, well, not necessarily can fly, but have feathers. And penguins do have feathers. Some people don't even uh, don't uh, realize that. Continuing, the final one, mammalia. All right, so I'm sure you recognize these four categories. Maybe not the terms exactly, but the appearances. All right, and mammalia have four or more subclasses. Again, there's so many subcategories, so we'll just keep it simple and say four. And then mammals, we have all these creatures, creatures that relate to us, that are warm-blooded, drink milk, uh, where the, the young, the offspring, drink milk. And yes, whales are mammals. I hope whoever is watching this already knows that, as they do breathe air through a nostril, type of nostril, rather than uh, gills like a fish. And it's warm-blooded, and the young feed on milk. And some can fly like bats. All right, continuing. So... Let's look at amphibia first. Amphibia divides into two next section, uh, two next, well, a category of two next. And these are these two subclasses. And the first subclass that I show, this one, no, not this one, this one. And that's why I'm going to choose also amphibia to explore further. I decided I was I wanted to explore reptile reptiles more and to get down to one example because I think more people are aware of them but we're going to go down the amphibian route because it's just more simple the way it's organized it only has two subclasses one of which this one this light gray are all extinct and one of which are more modern uh called amphibians and there might be yes there's some uh, extinct ancestors as well. So we'll be getting deeper into that subclass and of Lysamphibia. And Lysamphibia cover frogs, toads, newts, all that stuff. Sicilians, Sicilian, I'll just call them Sicilians. As we mentioned previously, just not including those prehistoric amphibians. Okay, and the next category we're going we're branching down to is order okay so under class we have order and lists amphibias amphibians have break down the two orders actually three orders because the first two kind of uh, re, uh belong to a, a, a category of its own and the third one is very different from those two. So let's take a look at them. The first one on this end is, are the frogs and toads. All right. And then difference between frog and toad, you probably know. Um, skin texture is very different. Uh, some behavioral differences and uh, other very uh, kind of, well, other more uh, obvious anatomical differences. 
So we've got frogs and toads here. Then we have the cow, I'll just call it cow data. And the cow data are these other guys that you know. The newts and the salamanders, mud puppies, things like that belong here. So these are very, they're more related. Then this third one here is sort of less related. And they're the Sicilians that I keep mentioning. Well, a little bit. So it's these guys. And they're kind of wormy looking, still not worms, they're vertebrates. Uh, very simple kind of creatures. They require moisture, just like most all amphibians do um, to survive. And they come in many different colors. They're very cool looking. Let's continue. Let's go into the suborders now. The suborders of Anura are three. Anura has three suborders. Caudata has three. And Sicilians, I don't think any suborders. So that's another subgrouping of the main one. All right, so the Anura, I'm going to be talking about one suborder there instead of three. I'm just going to start breaking down to covering a single specific animal, and that's the key here. So I'm dropping off these guys. I don't want to keep branching out there. We're going to keep branching out from this one suborder now. And these are ne uh, Neobatrachias. Neobatrachia suborder of frogs. These are basically considered new frogs, and they are the largest of the suborders. The largest. They have the most within them. I believe, let's see, the next grouping, which is family, they have 31. So they have 31 different families of frogs within the Neobactria. All right, so it's the biggest suborder of frogs and toads, Neobactria. All right, so now we're on the family level of branching classification, and out of the 31, we're going to branch out into one of those, and that's called Hylidia, or Hylidia. Uh, this family appears as so, we have these kind of frogs, and you might notice something similar among all of, uh, all of these, is that now we break down our frogs into only tree frogs. So we're starting to really see the animal uh, get pinned down, to, to start to look all similar. So these are all types of tree frogs that belong to Helidia. Helidia owns all the tree frogs. All right, now there's subfamilies here too and in this section there's three subfamilies only cool keeping it easy and simple let's branch out one of those and one of those that we'll be exploring is called philomedusinea some medusas in there hmm philomedusinea and philomedusinea please don't pay attention to my pronunciations here can be broken down well into these frogs Hmm, so they're tree frogs, but now they're starting to get even more of a, uh, what's the word, uh, uniform look to them. They're starting to all look even more similar to one another. Very cool uh, group of frogs. Very interesting. Now we go to the next level of the branch, which is genus. The genus. So the Philomedusinea may break down into seven genuses, and now the frog I want to pin down belongs to one of those genuses, which is Philomedusa. Simple as that. Philomedusa. Say it. You'll enjoy it. Philomedusa. And the Philomedusa owns these frogs. Many and many more. And now you can clearly see they're even more starting to become similar. So, continuing the next step, we have species, which I'm sure you've heard and you're aware of. And look how far we've had to go to get to the level of species, because now we're pretty close. Uh, many creatures end here at species. Philomedusa itself has 30 different species. 30 different species. So, quite a bit. Quite a bit for that specific category. And then the next category can be subspecies. But we're going to stop here, because this Philomedusa that I'm looking at 
ends here. It doesn't have any more subspecies. But some creatures do. You can have a tiger of a certain location and a tiger of another, like a Bengal tiger and a Siberian tiger, and they will be subspecies with a different look. And there's many, many such examples. So it's very important to keep in mind subspecies as well, as it can change the pattern or the colors of the creature quite significantly. So let's branch out our Phylomedusa into one of those 30 species, and it is the Phylomedusa savagi. Sav savagi. Not sure how to say it, but ladies and gentlemen, this is the star of our show. This is the Latin name of it, the scientific term for this creature, which in English we refer to as the waxy monkey tree frog. Totally awesome creature. And I've been wanting to get my hands on this creature for a long time. And I don't mean hands like that. I mean just to just to own one. I've seen one before. Captive bred. They are beautiful. They are gorgeous. They are so alien looking. Just look at that. How awesome that is. And look how far we had to go through. So we had to go through empires, kingdoms, phylum, classes, orders, families, genuses, and down to species to finally pin down the waxy monkey tree frog. Hmm. And there's many types of monkey tree frogs, and they belong to Phylomedusa. Phylomedusa. There's, well, maybe not many, but there are quite a few. So we went through life, eukaryotic, then we went to animal kingdom, then we went to the chordata phylum, then we went to the vertebrate, the vertebrata subphyla, through the tetrapod filter into the amphibian class. And you might have thought you're smart because you know arachnids, insecta, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. Hey, I know I did, but look, there are a lot, lot more. We just explored the animal kingdom. Look at what else we've got here. So, we went through amphibian to list amphibians, which are more, uh, uh, I think we said modern amphibians, right? And then we went into the frogs, into the more modern frog area that contains many of the species, most of the species, uh, types of frogs. And then we went down the Helidia, Phylomedusa, Fedusinae, Fed Medusinae, and then Phylomedusa to the waxy monkey tree frog. Beautiful creature. Look at that Yoda. No, not Yoda. The other one. The big one in Star Wars. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, what an awesome frog. And there you go. Hopefully you've seen a new creature today. But let's keep going. Let's give you guys a little bit of a challenge. How about you categorize, you tell me the classification of this. It's called the Caspian Sea Wolf. Caspian Sea Wolf. See if you can classify it without just finding the full classification, the definition of it. See if you can slowly pin it down one by one. And let me know if you can. And if you're up for that challenge, maybe you can try this one out, which is a lot. Well, it's more trickier. We've got the werewolf cat here. Hmm. Very cool animal. Something I want to get something I definitely want to get. Uh, and this one, a apple-headed chihuahua. Apple-headed chihuahua. Hmm, being a monstrous channel, I had to choose something stranger, right? Even though apple-headed chihuahuas are bright, quite common. So let's see if you can run down the classification on those. Put them down below. And if you guys have any questions at all, at all uh, shoot them to me down below. And... Let's see. I guess if you have any questions, let me know. But also, if you want me to make another chart exploring another section of the kingdom, of another one of the kingdoms, or if you would like me to explore the entire chart and break it down, I could do that. It will take a while. And it will be on a much bigger sheet than this one. But I can do that. But also, what I'm offering is I can run a live stream uh, answering questions and covering just covering this topic, the classification of life on Earth as we know it, uh, answering any questions there it would be a live stream solely focused to this. So 
I leave you guys with the conclusion of this fact. 45 species of fauna and flora are discovered a day. Okay? 45 species. That's cool. So we're still finding a lot of species of plants and animals every day. That's awesome. But on another note, that's not that impressive. That's not that great because 180 go extinct every day. That's more than double of what we're discovering. 180 go extinct every day. And you might say, well, it's natural for creatures to go extinct. Yes, but certainly not this many. Uh, this amount is a thousand times the natural rate of creature extinction. This is a thousand times more than actually go extinct every than actually naturally go extinct every day without our influence and our, the influences of pollution and, and taking over land space and what and all that stuff that people and humanity does. So around 180. It's actually 150 to 200 go extinct every day. Keep that in mind. And so I'll leave you with that. Uh, let me double check my notes. I forgot to mention the difference between bacteria and archaea, but I think you're okay with me not covering that. So I hope you're up to the challenge of the classification. Let me know if you would like me to do the classifications. Let me know if you would like me to do a live stream on this topic. And until next time, while well, you've been watching this presentation here at World of Monsters, if it's your first time here, I do hope you come back. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope it wasn't too long and too complex. Until next time.